Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the OC Show. This is episode seven of season three. My name is Peter. I'm standing next to Tim. Hello, Tim. Hey, Peter. How's it going? All good. How are you? Very good. It's uh, it's nice to be back on the show after such a a long time away. Uh, we've been quite busy over the last month, so we missed a few shows. Well, we missed. We did some on the road, but <laughs> it's not the same. All right. So let's uh, let's jump right into the first topic: the OC Esports competitions. So yep. first of all, we have the the Road to Pro, the main competition at uh, OC Esports, which uh, uh, falls into two pieces: the Pro C and the Challenger divisions. Yeah, so all of that came to an end, actually, or well, is coming to an end in the next few hours. But the Pro C is pretty much already all done. So uh, currently, um, we have Dan Cup in the lead. Not a surprise, but also a surprise. Uh, the surprise is to see Ralph from uh, Sweden being right behind him, but not so much behind because they actually have the same point counts. And uh, so we'll see uh, what the staff decides on that, uh, how the tie break is going to be made. Not sure yet. Um, the rest of the competitions are uh, also touching to an end as well. The div division one to seven. Uh, the first one, Metal Racer from the USA, is uh, currently first. Uh, we've got also uh, Scanic from Italy on Division 2. And uh, Strong Island from the USA, closely followed by Orion 24 on Division 3. So those are quite cool. That's pretty cool. Those are four names that are not very, very established in the overclocking world. And I mean, we all know them if you follow the overclocking quite closely, co quite closely, but they're not really the guys that you've seen at the top for the past five or seven years or something like that. Yeah. You can actually clearly see uh, from the divisions that some guys, they, they actually really decide to just go for the divisions and it's kind of their seasonal strategy. And instead of uh, focusing on all the other competitions that they could do, they just, okay, I just have this kind of hardware so this year I'm just gonna go for that and uh, we see the names coming back from one round to the next uh, and also they come back in the same divisions as well so which kind of proves that those guys chose that kind of hardware and just keep stick to it yeah, it's pretty cool division one is with the with the Intel Core i7 and then division two is with the Intel Core i5 and then division three is with the Intel Core, Core i3, we're now even with Skylake. The non case are overclockable. If you have the right bias. Yeah, exactly. So Division 4 is AMD FX, where Sergey R from Ukraine is currently uh, currently leading. Then in Division 5, which is the AMD APUs, we have uh, DMAC from Greece, uh, closely followed by the same Sergey R from Ukraine. So it seems that Sergey is really into the AMD stuff. He is, he is, yeah. And then in Division 6, which is uh, ARM, which, uh, it's uh, dominated by Christian Krusic from Slovenia, who also won uh, one of the rounds last year. So he's really into the ARM overclocking stuff. Yeah. And the uh, last one, Division 7, for whatever is left. Uh, we've got uh, Lan Bonden from uh, Sweden. And uh, he's followed by a, a guy which I put there because it's also quite funny. He's an Aussie overclocker called Aussie. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, some new faces actually as well, so very cool. Uh, so last week also we uh, ended up uh, closing the Rookie Rumble number 32. Uh, and Tome from uh, Italy won that one. Uh, and the Novice Nimble overclocked the net still at the top, but we see Cockatland that is back into the rankings uh, in sandwich between OCN and overclockers.com. So we'll see uh, how that plays off in the next round. So the next Novice Nimble, number 10, anniversary edition yep. of the Novice Nimble, starts on July 2nd, and the two Rookie, rookie Rumbles, both for the Intel and for the AMD, will also start, start on, uh, on July 2nd. Yeah, so plenty of stuff to do for all the new recruits from the World Tour. Um, so what happened next in the last uh, few um, months and weeks, well, months, weeks, slash, because it was a little bit on the end of May and starting of June. And June is already finished. That was Computex. And Computex is the biggest trade show for tech in the world. It's the mecca of of overclocking and for overclockers. And this year, we had some big launches. We had the Intel, uh, Intel launching their Broadwell eCPUs over there. But we also had NVIDIA a little bit before Computex, because of course they couldn't do it like everybody, you know. So they launched their stuff before the 1080 graphics cards, uh, where we are still seeing some kind of BIOS in development things coming there, and it's a little bit tricky for the overclockers. But those were the two big products that were awaited and uh, be looked uh, for and after at Computex. And a lot of people actually gathered for the occasion. So G-School had their annual Overclocking World Cup and Overclocking World Record stage. Mm -hmm. Again, the difference is that on the World Record stage, 
G-Skill invites every motherboard vendor on one day to try and break as many world records as possible. And this year it was mostly focused on Skylake. And I think the biggest thing is that um, uh, G-Skill managed to even improve their memory overclocking r record that they established, I think, one week before Computex already. And I think right now we're almost at DDR4 5200. Wow, pretty impressive. So that is, uh, that's with the new BDI memory sticks and with the ASRock Z, uh, Z170M OC formula. And then in the OC World Cup is a, is a competition for overclockers. You have to qualify online and then you can, can compete for the biggest cash prize in the overclocking competition world. It's 10,000 US dollar for the winner Plus of the OC World Cup. Cash for the others. Cash for the others as well, but the main prize yeah. is of course 10,000 US dollars. This year, Splave won the competition mm -hmm. just like uh, two years ago, again on Astrock. I think for Astrock, this is the third edition in, the, in a row that they win. Uh, and he beat it, uh, Dan Kopp in the final. Lucky Noob finished uh, third. Yeah, so cool for them. A lot of cash for Splave. Congratulations. And then the second big OC event was, of course, our very own Asia World Tour and the World uh, Series. We had a massive booth working together with Cyber Media and Tetra. Mm -hmm. Tetra is the, the, the organizers, or right? Yeah, the organization behind Computex. We also worked together with uh, with Intel and with Zadak uh, 511, who were launching new products at Computex. In particular, Intel was pretty interesting because we were the very first to use Broadwell E CPUs in the world. In fact... I heard you guys <laughs> broke the, uh, the NDA. Yeah, <laughs> funny story. Two hours before the official launch of Broadwell E on the keynote, lifting the NDA, NDA our amateurs were already using production grade CPUs in our workshops. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, I, I wonder actually how that played off internally at Intel. I would like to, to hear the, the discussions in the background. Uh, what, uh, what is going on over there? <laughs> everything was pre-approved and, and pre-orchestrated okay. beforehand. For the extreme overclockers, there was of course one more ticket to be earned for the world uh, for the world championship at the end of the year in Brazil. Uh, sorry, in in Berlin. Brazil. <laughs> we can go to Brazil. I'm cool <laughs> with that. Yeah. <laughs> the structure was a bit different than the previous events. So every day there was a qualifier and a one versus one face-off between the the top two of the qualifier. Every winner of the daily face-off got their seat in the final at the yep. end of. Uh, the event on a Saturday. So our finalists were Hazan, Raccoon, Dankop, and Extreme Addict. And each of the qualified people had to use the same motherboard that they won with in the daily face-off. Oh, so each daily face-off used a different motherboard? Yes, a different vendor even. A so different vendor. On, the, on the last uh, last day and the, the final of the competition, we had Astrog versus, uh, versus Asus, I believe, and mm -hmm. then MSI versus Gigabyte. And then the final was between Street Extreme Addict on a Gigabyte X99 SoC Champion, yep. and then Hazan on a MSI motherboard. I think Godlike Gaming. It was a Titanium Edition one. Titanium yeah. Edition as well. Oh, yeah. Actually, I think now it's no more edition. It's Titanium. Titanium. Yeah. Anyway, so, Extreme Addict won the ticket to the World Championship, yep. so we'll be seeing him back in Berlin at the end of the year in December. Well, he must be very happy about that because uh, he was there in Europe. He tried, and. Um, it didn't work out for him in Europe, but this time finally he nailed it. So he must be pretty happy about that. I guess Hassan is going to look forward for the Southeast Asia event. Oh yeah, we're going <laughs> to Indonesia as well. It's pretty funny for Extreme Addict because he's mainly supported by Asus, then tried on MSI and finally succeeded on Gigabyte. So he's covering all bases this year. It's good. It's proving also uh, him being worthy of all the brands, being able to handle competitions on all of them. So that's good as well. You should not restrain yourself to just one. Yeah. I think the world tour at Computex was the biggest one that we did in terms of audience as well in terms of coverage. It was really exciting to, to finally be able to put a massive booth together. We had some uh, history and some uh, some overclocking museum kind of artwork going around the then venue. There was a super by timeline yeah. and stuff. Pretty cool. The pictures are actually in the forum if you want to see, if you want to check out what we did exactly at Computex. Or on Facebook too. Or on Facebook. There's a lot of pictures on Facebook. Yeah, and if you guys missed some of the the matches, if you want to watch the replays, they're all on the OCTV YouTube channel as well. So oh. in the link in the description below, you can check that out. All don't, of the matches. All of them. Don't forget. Including to them. some epic blue screens from Trifman. 
<laughs> right. So yeah, for for me that event was great. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was cool to be to be there all week on the booth. Uh, I sadly uh, because of that event had no time to go around Computex, <laughs> which is kind of weird when you live here the whole year and <laughs> everyone is coming here for Computex. And all you do is. <laughs> just don't leave your booth there. I, I understand now what vendors or uh, some of the people from the industry feel after one week on their booth. They, <laughs> they're like, uh, yeah, it would be great to see the rest. But then again, that's part of the job. So it's it's cool. In terms of community events, there was also other stuff going on uh, since the last OC show. I think in Indonesia, there was a massive overclocking event. Yeah, the Indonesian guys are always surprising us, I have to say. They're, they're, there's always something coming in uh, Indonesia that you don't foresee in. That came on June 20, uh, 15 to 26. Uh, so the guys uh, were organizing what they call the the Enthusiast Zone Festival. And uh, it was not just overclocking. They had uh, some gaming uh, tournaments going on, of course, some overclocking tournaments. They had some VR experience kind of area where people could try it out. Uh, they had some Oculus headsets and things like that. So that was taking place at the Mangadua Mall, which is basically the, the computer mall in Jakarta. And that's also where uh, Gigabyte hold the GOOC in 2010, back in the days. And um, so that location is a great location. There's a lot of uh, PC shops all around. So it's, um, it's really ideal. It's like you would do it in Guanghua here in Taipei. Um, so the banner of the event was saying overclocking competition, extreme LN2 battle, and overclocking target OC. So there were three main activities for overclockers going on. Uh, the organizers uh, pride themselves about the fact that they had no ban list, so everyone was allowed. So of course, what happened is that we saw Alva being there, we saw Hendra being there, so the whole uh, Jagat OC crew was there. Uh, and of course, uh, they took a big part of the win. Um, we had some one versus one uh, benchmark draws that were made with a wheel that was uh, quite cool as well. It was a, it was a nice way of uh, visualizing the draw of the benchmark. I really like that. Um, I also talked a little bit to Alva over uh, Facebook uh, this morning, and he was saying that he really enjoyed it. Uh, for him, it was really nice to compete against some of the guys he actually trained in the AOCT, so people that he would never had uh, had the chance to compete against uh, unless there was not a uh, competition organized by somebody else than him. Uh, it was great also for him to remember some uh, nostalgic souvenirs of the go see in that place. Uh, kind of becoming a, a mythical area, that, that mall. It, it's pretty interesting that Alva competed against the people that he trained in AOCT, and I think that's the reason also why the ban list was such a big thing, because we all know that for the amateur overclocking tournament organized by Jagger Review, they have a ban list where they refuse anyone who's done extreme previous, cooling yeah. before, yeah. before or has won uh, uh, an overclocking competition already. And this fits in with the entire spirit of uh, experienced overclockers sharing yeah. their findings and sharing information to people who want to get into overclocking and extreme overclocking. Uh, yeah. One of the aspects of that as well is the Pro OC program, which is backed by HyperX and where professional overclockers get a, uh, a financial um, c contribution as well as some hardware support for delivering guides and delivering information to starting overclockers. So, for example, we have Dr. Wees who does. I think one live stream every week or maybe yeah, even more than that. Yeah, once or twice a week, yeah. depends. So you can you can check that out on his Twitch and his YouTube uh, YouTube channel. Splave wrote a very interesting guide on DDR4 maintenance. So he was pointing out that if you want to achieve the highest possible clock frequencies, just like with a car, if you want to have a, a, a well-tuned car, you need mm. to do proper maintenance on it. So he explained how he maintains all of his DDR4 sticks and how he ensures that every single session he gets the highest frequency and the lowest timings possible. Yeah, yeah it was eraser cleaning the pins and things like that. It's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Uh, Lucky Noob also shared a extreme overclocking guide for more of the preparation side of memory overclocking. So he explained how to insulate using art eraser, uh, yeah. how to prepare your motherboard and your memory for extreme memory overclocking. Pretty yes. cool. It's always tricky to do uh, LN2 on memory, so having a good guide out there is it's a very nice thing to have. Thanks, guys, for that. I have yeah. to see. So now here's the outro. Here's the outro. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so um, that's about it for this episode. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a live next week with uh, with Struthman that is back in Canada. Uh, that will be Tuesday, July 5th at 9 p.m. Uh, we'll be uh, live on Twitch, I suppose, and uh, probably on Facebook too, since now we can do lives on Facebook very easily. So 
If you guys uh, have a lower bandwidth or you are just not using Twitch on your phone, you can always check it out on the Facebook app on your phone, so that's always nice. If you have any questions by then, just let us know. We'll try to reply to it and um, prepare some answers. If there's some specific people you would like to have on the live that we can still invite or squeeze in, uh, let us know. If you have something to say, you can also join the live. Just send us a message and apply for it. Cool. Yeah, so... That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and see you next week. See you next week, guys.